Kuala Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, Fiji Sugar seeks new markets. 193 child labourers back in school. And culture of fear at GPH under previous management. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. The morning era for the sugar export market will come to pass as the Fiji Sugar Corporation is open for business again. This comes after FSC identified new markets in the Asian region because its dependence on one customer in Europe expires this September. Rapate Valime reports. Fiji Sugar Corporation Chief Executive Graham Clark says, if you produce the sugar, we need to sell it. So everybody is now up there saying, when can we get Fiji sugar again? The most embarrassing thing is we don't have enough. If we had 600,000 tons today, we could sell it. Clark stated the FSC has received inquiries from markets around the world wanting to buy Fiji sugar again. However, he says the FSC still needs to cater for the local market first before exporting. He also says supplying sugar to the tourism industry and small secondary shops locally should be prioritized. Farm World Fiji Managing Director Brandon Davis says the biggest issue is land preparation. We don't plan the land, we can't harvest it, we can't grow it, we can't do anything else. So I suppose that's where we come from. Uh, we've been working fairly hard. FSC launched its strategic plan this morning in Lotoka. The focus of the board and management is to commercialize the industry again. Rapate Valime, FBC News. Over the past six years, close to 200 children who were engaged in some form of child labour have been placed back in schools. While this has been made possible through the Labour Ministry's Child Labour Unit, the International Labour Organization in Fiji believes more work needs to be done to eradicate child labour. Pranita Prakash reports. A child's rightful place is in school and child labour takes away these very fundamental rights. We need to ensure as parents and guardians that we ourselves do not harm our children's future by putting them in employment instead of education, by asking them to earn a wage while we take a rest, nor by abusing them instead of nurturing them. Following two rapid assessments in Fiji in 2009 and in 2015, the ILO believes more effort needs to be placed to end all forms of child labour. The rapid assessments indicated that the root causes of child labor, such as dysfunctional families and poverty, still needs to be addressed. The assessments also found children exploited through hazardous work. The Education Ministry has also rolled out programs to identify all school dropouts and support them get back to schools or technical colleges. Bold Day Against Child Labour this year focuses on the impact of conflicts and disasters on children. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A culture of fear and intimidation led to the downfall of the previous management at Suva's iconic Grand Pacific Hotel. Rachel Knott reports strong claims of harassment of staff were brought before the government in 2015, which was referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Economic Affairs for recommendations. The then Grand Pacific Hotel General Manager Eugene Dietham and his management had instilled bad governance within the hotel. It was early days and I think it, it took a little bit of time to get settled in, settled down. But I, but I really want to stress, I think this is, we're talking history now, we're talking over two years ago. Issues of unfair dismissal and division within staff leading to bullying were a few issues raised by employees. There from PF deductions. Okay. Uh, apparently they weren't being done correctly or not being fed to the employees' accounts. Have they both been rectified? We, we had confusion when the hotel first opened. We had these really strange contracts of employment that were contracted on net rate, not a gross rate, which I've never seen anywhere else. In fact, it's not common practice, certainly not in Fiji. I think that that created some confusion uh, with rates of pay. 
at uh, one stage uh, the union got them independently checked, the Ministry of Labour in their normal course of events had gone through a couple of times. I don't think we have any issues. Five complaints are still pending within the Department of Labour. The committee will present its recommendations on the petition in Parliament next month. Rachel Na, FBC News. A Colombian national charged with unlawful importation of illicit drugs recalled the day when he arrived in Fiji four years ago. Aidan Hurtado testified in Suva High Court this morning that his luggage was missing when he arrived in Fiji and then explained his stay in Fiji until he was arrested. Sharon Shivan with more. Aidan Hurtado claims he was taken to the Fiji Airways office after informing the officials that his luggage was missing from the airport. He said from there, a staff accompanied him to the Peninsula Hotel in Suva and the following day he bought clothes for himself as all his belongings were in the suitcase which did not arrive at the airport. Hatado said on the third day, the Fiji Airways staff told him that his luggage was found in Australia and will reach Fiji the next day. He said when his luggage arrived in Fiji, he was told to open the bag in front of the Fiji Airways staff. Soon after that, Hatado said he was taken to Lotoka and was arrested by the police officers. Hatado is accused of unlawfully importing 20.5 kilograms of cocaine to Fiji in 2014. He also claims that the officers who arrested him demanded his passport and from the very few English words which he understood that the officers forced him to sign some documents and told him to go back to Colombia. The trial continues tomorrow. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. A mother of one took the witness stand today in the trial of a radio announcer charged with rape. 30-year-old Jay Prasad is alleged to have raped the woman on the 30th of July 2014. On the day of the alleged offence, the victim alleged that the accused, who is her neighbour, forced her into his bedroom and she was pushed against the wall and later became unconscious. The alleged victim said when she woke up, she did not have any clothes on and alleges she was raped by the accused. She reported the matter to police days after the incident. Well, still to come, a call to protect the elderly. And Sabha says, listen to the voices of young people. Details after the break. Bula FM number dua and seri. The Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation for the first time will march to raise awareness of elder abuse this Thursday. Speaking at length on this initiative, Minister Responsible Miraseni Buniwanga has confirmed the ministry aims to bring home elders who are being cared for at old people's homes. Savara Tambor reports. There is a need for every Fijian to join hands and help in the alleviating of abuse faced by our elderly citizens. According to the Minister for Poverty Alleviation, Merasini Wunyuanga, elderly citizens occupy a big component of our national population and the need to look after them is paramount. To bring back what we Fijians are known for, looking after our elder relatives within the comforts of our own homes and within the comforts of our own communities. Respect another very important component of looking after our elder citizens. So basically, June 15th is all about that, raising awareness on elder abuse. Fijians have shared their views on the initiative. Yes, I think it's a good idea. I believe initiative put in place by the ministry will encourage relatives of those senior citizens in homes to reconsider their decisions. Let's break the silence and protect our elders. That will be the theme for this event. Members of the public are advised to wear purple on this special occasion. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Suicide among young of Indian descent is becoming an issue of concern for the Sanatan Dharam Pratinidhi Sabha, Fiji. In an effort to address the issue, the Sabha is closely collaborating with the Indian government in getting voices of young people heard. Senior Nimboila reports. 
Issues surrounding suicide were major points of discussions during the one-day Sanatan Youth Workshop at the University of the South Pacific this morning. In one of the goals is gender and suicide uh, reduction. Uh, what we're trying to do is focus on these areas, look at the key points, and also try uh, look at ways where we can approach communities more. Uh, to reduce all these cases. While officiating the day-long event, Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy said the youth is the engine of the country and needs to be supplied with the right information. How we could nurture them, how we could give them the right information, right knowledge to build and secure future Fiji. Learn of what and how the Sanatan youth is contributing towards the community and how can I be part of it? As a youth, uh, I think we youth should be part of uh, such workshops and conventions and conferences as well so that we know about uh, the information available in the society. Great workshop. It's actually, this workshop is basically empowering all the youth. The workshop is funded by the government of India. Sanatan Fiji currently has 26 youth branches around the country. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The energy and water utilities are working on a number of projects to boost Fiji's vision of reducing our carbon footprint. With Fiji joining the International Solar Alliance, both utilities today presented their submissions on the ISA Framework Agreement to the Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence. Rachel Nath has more. 120 countries joined the International Solar Alliance proposed by the Indian government during COP22. The objective is to efficiently exploit solar energy to reduce independence on fossil fuel. To these other conventions uh, can give us uh, more access to especially uh, renewable energy projects. You know, we already talked about solar desalination plant. That is a um, you know a viable solution for the islands. Government's vision is to be 100% renewable by 2030. Fiji's vision is by 2025 we are to be 90% renewable energy and. Uh, we are in as much as uh, in collaboration with the, with the International Solar uh, ISA. Being part of ISA allows Fiji to access funding to fight climate change. The submissions presented by the utilities will be compiled and tabled in Parliament. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Mali Rugby Club will be advocating on reforestation whenever it enters the rugby field. The club received their new set of jerseys from the Ministry of Forestry following a partnership on reforestation. Eleanor Tranga View reports. The Mali Rugby Club had requested the help of the Minister for Forest for a set of jerseys for its players. A deal was then struck that saw the young men plant native trees and through the forestation of degraded forest initiative, the ministry would provide the jerseys. They were to plant a few hectares of native trees. Under this initiative, the ministry pays for every hectare planted and the money usually goes towards village projects. We then decided to let the youths plant a few hectares and the money they got was used by the ministry to get the jerseys. 23 sets of jerseys, complete with shorts and socks, worth over $2,000, was handed over to the club late last week. The young men were reminded of what they will be advocating when they are on the field. The jerseys have a logo behind it which says, Our Forest, Our Future. This means that whenever you go into the field to play, you are spreading awareness and advocating on reforestation and the need to protect our forest for our future generation. Team manager Amo Simbaya says they will wear the jersey with pride, knowing they are doing their part in protecting our forests. We hardly get opportunities like this, so we are really grateful to the ministry for the jerseys we have received. In the last seven months, the people of Mali have planted 22 hectares of native trees, setting a record in community planting for the whole of Fiji. Eleanor Turangiwio, FBC News. Skipper Cup competition goes on break. That's ahead in sports with Jamie, but right now it's Rachel with business. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Rural women arrive for National Expo. And in growing Fiji, Numbo Green Energy soon to supply to FEA. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in, 
to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita, we love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideo Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. Hit. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back in business tonight. 100 women artisans from the rural maritime areas of the Eastern Division are in Suva for the Fiji National Women's Expo. The representatives attended a workshop today with a brief on human rights, their empowerment and increasing access to markets. Maggie Boyle reports. These women represent the provinces of Lao, Kandavu, Lomaiviti and Rotuma. Sustainable Development Goal 5 on the topic of equality of women and the empowerment of women and girls. And it's under that umbrella that our national laws, our constitution, and of course the initiatives that government comes up with, like the Women's Expo, all these fall under this global initiative. The annual expo which these women will participate in from Wednesday is not only about selling their exceptional work. It teaches us an important lesson about recognizing their inherent human dignity that yes, these are the people behind the economy that make Fiji the nation it is. From the biggest contingent of 34 participants from Laos to the smallest from Rotuma with 14 artists, the expo is the highlight of their year. A workshop and we make our handicraft and uh, there's some here that say that are called the license. Yes, I've been uh, part of uh, the expo for the last three years. Uh, it was so excited for me to be participant in this year's uh, National Expo and I was really looking forward for this Expo. The Fiji National Women's Expo is not only about these women being able to make a livelihood over the next three days with sales for some amounting to $5,000, but it's also about recognizing their contribution to the economy. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. And now Savanada joins us from HFC Bank with the very latest from the trading world. Good evening. Looking at last week's South Pacific Stock Exchange performance, there were 18,751 shares trading totaling $30,509 over 13 transactions. Within the 13 transactions, there were four securities that were being traded, Amalgamated Telecom Holdings, FMF Foods, Fiji Television, and Fijian Holdings. All shares traded recorded positive price movements. As a result of these price increases, the market capitalization rose by 1.06% to $1.42 billion. And the South Pacific Stock Exchange Total Return Index increased by 1.1% to close at a value of 3,422.36. That's the news from our local stock market up to now. Vinaka, Rachel. Thanks for the updates of another. On to today's exchange rates, there were a lot of movement over the weekend as the Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 3.22 and 47 cents respectively. Closer to home, our dollar strengthened against the Australian dollar to close at 62 cents while it weakened against the New Zealand and PNG Kina to close at 65 cents and 1.32. As for the commodities market, oil prices rose to close at 48.78 a barrel. Gold dropped closing at 1,266 an ounce and silver followed suit closing at 17.24 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, renewable en energy company Numbo Green Energy will supply 12 megawatts of power to the FEA grid at the end of this month. This is their first output which is expected to supply electricity to Nandi and parts of Singatoka. Rapati Valame has more. Korea-based Numbo Green Energy is Fiji's first biomass power producer and one of FEA's independent power producers. Uh, our planning is uh, hope, uh, maybe three biomass power plants like this in the western and eastern area. And uh, through this reference, uh, we'd like to expand to the other uh, South Pacific countries. Expansion means investment in infrastructure and the people. The company will spend around $400 million on this development. For the uh, power plant itself, uh, we, are, uh, we already hired the, around the 50 people already and for the power plant. And uh, we also have uh, the fuel supply chain. So uh, 
that area not directly but uh, for the uh, indirectly we also uh, uh, employ the uh, local people around the, the uh, 60 people and now uh, while we did the uh, construction we hired the around the, the 170 people team manager Aviji Chaudhry says they are also looking at the Namboro landfill outside Lamy as a waste energy project. Uh, when we say in Fiji, we are next plan we are look, looking at in Sambetho. And then we probably have another plant. It's coming into place in the uh, eastern side, which is maybe the Awasamu side as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we may looking at onto that in the um, northern side in, in the next plan that we may have. The company will operate for 25 years as per the contract, after which they will hand over the plants to the government. The project is a step forward towards ensuring that Fiji uses 100% renewable energy by 2030. Rapati May, FBC News. And that's your business news this evening. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Flying Fijians prepare for Italy test. And Fiji football lose second match against New Caledonia. This and more coming up. I am Subha meri aankh khulti hai to main mirchi fm sunti hu mirchi fm is number 1 it's so hot hum log bar town ke career driver logon ne hum log ke mirchi fm suno acha lage mirchi fm is hot hi main sandhya nara refugee se mere sare dost mirchi fm sunte hai mirchi fm is hot i love mirchi fm hame screen to pata hua ke mirchi fm mein sabse acha gana baje mirchi fm it's hot Vodafone Flying Fijian coach John McKee was full of praise for halfback Serupupeli Vularika following last Saturday's test match against the Wallabies in Melbourne. After a stellar performance, the firefighter may push his way ahead of talented Nicola Matawalu for the game against Italy on Saturday. Mele Tavanga reports. He was excellent when he came on and certainly I think he um, got our game going. Like a really crisp uh, delivery from the, from the, the base of the rucks which, which we really need. Vularika is likely to start in the first lineup on Saturday. He's right, he's right in contention as are a number of players, so we'll, uh, we'll be looking at training tomorrow particularly and, and looking at some combinations and, and we'll be picking our team later in the week. So yeah, I mean, Saru on the back of his performance against Australia. Backline coach Andre Bell believes they will need to keep the ball in hand to attack properly against Italy. Just being a little bit more clinical in, in, in what we do from from our set piece and um, and also um, the ability to get ourselves a little bit of shape in, in our attack and, and, and if we can do that. With Big Star set to return to the lineup soon, the Flying Fijians hope to win its first June international test in their home turf. But this will only be possible if the team develops its game and rectifies all their weaknesses in these remaining days. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. The Skipper Cup competition will go on a break this weekend with the Flying Fijians scheduled to host Italy on Saturday at ANZ Stadium. The Naita Siri rugby team hopes to maintain their top form in the Skipper Cup competition. Meanwhile, Naita Siri, who are gunning for a home semi-final, hope to secure a bonus point when they take on Malolo in the last round of the competition next weekend. The Naita Siri side is currently topping the ladder with 24 points and hopes to finish on top this season. The key is to um, go back to our drawing board. Uh, work hard next week. Um, you know, Northland sort of uh, exposed a few weaknesses, but a number of uh, majority fans in the western side too. We uh, we saw that against Nandi, that uh, probably uh, probably two thirds uh, of the supporters are wearing Netasiri colours in, in the western division. So yeah, we're just looking forward uh, to playing uh, in some nice weather with some sun underneath us to, to just test the uh, physical abilities of our boys. The Vodafone Fiji football side went down to New Caledonia 2-1 in its last match of the FIFA World Cup Stage 3 qualifiers last night. The Christophe Gamel coach side came from a goal down to equalise, but the home team eventually got the winner in the second spell. Rohit Deo reports. Which includes the World Cup, uh, four World Cup qualifiers, six um, in the Indonesia, 
After the qualifiers, Fiji remains the 181st ranked team in the world, while Nicoledonia moves up three places to 162. New Zealand is the biggest climber in Oceania, moving up 17 places to 95. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association is expecting a large turnout at the Vodafone Fiji Fact semi-finals and final this weekend. Fiji FA Chief Executive Mohamed Yusuf says the ground is in tip-top condition and officials are just tying up loose ends ahead of the weekend. Rio faces Lambasa in the first semi-final at 2 p.m. while Suva plays Nandi at 4.30 p.m. Both matches will be played at Ratu Dakumbau Park. We will start selling tickets at the FA headquarters and Nursery Town Council so that the fans, uh, it's a Saturday afternoon, so fans can have tickets in advance and they would not delay them at the gate. So we are making this available for the fans. We know the fans will come in large numbers. The week-long South Pacific Bowling Carnival ended on the Suva Club Greens yesterday. Despite the inclusion of a few new bowlers, veteran Litia Tikoi Suba says each game in the tournament was tough. Meli Tavanga has more. Introduced into the sport in 1988, Litia Tikoi Suba has been playing bowls for more than two decades. It was a tough tournament, so you beat somebody and then the other team get better on that day. They beat somebody else, so it was... A a do or die, really. The 54-year-old successfully defended her title over Elizabeth Modiway 21-20 to win the ladies' single. Her team finished as runners-up in the women's four final. Uh, at the fifth round, uh, at the fourth round, everybody had two wins and two losses on all the teams. And we had six rounds of run Robert, And that it was anyone's game. Women's four champions, Mariani Lobo and her teammates, says it was a tough final. Judge Dillon sponsored our team, so I want to thank uh, Gary Barnett and uh, Charlotte Barnett for sponsoring our team. And to other ladies, thanks for the, for the good games that they gave us. Meanwhile, the team of Suvas Dan Lamont came out victorious in the men's four after beating Joe LePaul's team 22-18 in the final. Melita Banga, FBC Sports. In the world of cricket, India crushed a disorganized South Africa by eight wickets at the Oval to reach the semi-finals of the Champions Trophy. World number one South Africa was eliminated, suffering three runouts in a collapse of eight wickets for 51 runs to be bowled out for 191. That's it from sports this evening. Catch weather later on with Angie and in new media. Take a look at Microsoft's new console, the Xbox One X. This and more coming up. Bula, kero mai singa toka, kero ndo tali taka na varo ronga na radio Fiji One ndo moi viti. Aya wa na rinse, uchiku mina shamba utikola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji One ndo moi viti. Aya kwa zo sili tali, na kura rama ina omani, na ronga, vitu tali taka ni ndo tupi na shamba le, na kuto ronga, varo ronga na radio Fiji One ndo moi viti. Na radio Fiji One ndo moi viti na bonga ni bi ena. In new media, Microsoft has unveiled its new console for the much-awaited Xbox One X. The machine will be released on 7th November. Now it's time for weather with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. Hope you enjoyed your marvellous weekend and your Monday as well. We all know when the weather is good, we feel great and all the Monday blues are shh, taken away. Looking at today in the west, it was partly to mostly sunny with high humidity level. Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, it was way cooler at 26 degrees with partly clouded skies. And up in Vanua Levu, it was mostly cloudy but there is no sign of any rain for tonight. At sea, there is a strong wind warning for all Fiji waters with southeast winds gusting up to 25 knots with very rough seas. And for the tides, high tide will be at 8.54 tonight with a low tide at 2.46 tomorrow morning. Sunrise will be at 6.34. For tomorrow, showers will bubble up in Suva and Savu Savu. The rest of the areas will be cool and dry. Tomorrow's temps, Suva and Savu Savu are looking cool with highs of 27. And looking ahead to Wednesday, we will have fine conditions. And that Ambrita is FBC weather for tonight. Thank you, Angie. 
On Fijian Pulse today, we asked, do you think child labour is an issue in Fiji? Maybe in the holidays, it's just to earn some spending. It's not that like child labour is a major issue, no. We need to think of the future and how we build these kids. We need to be able to pull them out of the gutter and give them a better life better education, better health. That's the only way we can get forward. You know, and everyone is to get together and support the cause of no child labour because that's very, very important. Yes, it is an issue and I think it should be more strict laws. Yes, because uh, you can see some uh, young children nowadays, uh, they've been employed by some of the companies. Yes, it's been practiced in Fiji. Yes, it's an issue we need to solve it. Now in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a team of Polish inventors have created a push-button instrument that almost anyone can play. Musicon helps disabled children enter the world of music. Recapping the main stories, Fiji Sugar seeks new markets, 193 child labourers back in school, and culture of fear at GPH under previous management. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, now the results from last week, we had asked, has the campaign for next year's general election started too soon? 53% answered yes. This week, we are asking, can the Vodafone Flying Fijians beat Italy and Scotland? You can visit our FBC website to answer. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. Or you can also follow tweet us to news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. That was your FPC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. <laughs>